Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today we start a new series on the bodybuilding programs of the 80s action stars. And in this video we are going to look at how Arnold trained for his first blockbuster movie role, Conan the Barbarian. As many of us old school bodybuilding fans will know, Conan the Barbarian was truly the movie that put Arnold on the map and made him an overnight Hollywood star. In 1977, Arnold was recruited for the role after his success with Stay Hungry and Pumping Iron, and Arnold had begun to train for the role as filming was set to begin in mid to late 1980, during the time of the 1980 Mr. Olympia to be held in Sydney, Australia. The fourth contestant, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Roy Callender, number six, Roy I Callender. I originally had intended around uh, eight weeks ago to start training Roy very Callender, hard with the objective in mind to get in my best possible shape for a film I'm going to do, which is Conan the Barbarian. And we're going to start shooting the, uh, the first few scenes in October. And so I really wanted to be muscular because the idea was that Conan was a very muscular, heroic looking guy and that I should be in top shape. So all along with sword fighting lessons and dancing lessons and all that, I did my bodybuilding. But the closer I came to this competition, the more people started speculating on the idea that I would be competing. And uh, uh, the more I started thinking about the possibility. And so around three weeks or two weeks ago, I decided, well, I think it would be kind of an interesting challenge, really, to uh, do something in, in eight weeks that most of the guys do uh, of in uh, preparing a year or two years in advance. As we have just heard from Arnold himself in the movie The Comeback, Arnold had been training like his normal bodybuilding days for the film Conan the Barbarian, training six days a week on his two-day split, hitting each body part three times a week. But after controversially winning the 1980 Mr. Olympia, with Arnold ripped to shreds and fresh from his Olympia win, he flew back to Spain to begin filming in October 1980. Much to the surprise of John Milius, the director, Arnold was way too ripped and huge for the role. He was so ripped in fact that he was asked to retrain and look chunkier so to speak and gain weight and look like a pit fighter warrior type of person that was slaved and chained for years. In order to not show his Olympia physique, Milius had Arnold draped in robes and furs and made to look like Conan the King and this scene was used as the introduction to the film. In actual fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger was cast before the script for Conan the Barbarian was even written. Although some claim that Arnold's chest and arms were way too big for the role after the 1980 Mr. Olympia to wield a sword properly, Arnold claims this was not true as he had been training with Sensei Yamazaki for three years since 1977. Nevertheless, a slimmed down version for the role of Conan was needed and Arnold began training for the role which included running, martial arts, weapons training and more physical activities like horseback riding, climbing ropes and trees, swimming and all the while cutting his weightlifting significantly down to just one hour a day as opposed to his previous bodybuilding split routines which required sometimes him training up to four hours a day. Arnold trained lighter for the role of Conan because as he put it, quote, the heavier you train, the more you gain weight, end quote. While in Madrid, Arnold did manage to find a gym where he would train and later had access to a complete set of weights and a universal station that had been set up in the basement of the hotel where the cast was staying at. The bodybuilding equipment setup also included a calf machine, leg extension, leg curl machine, a triceps extension machine, a barbell set with easy curl bar, a set of dumbbells and a bench press station. According to Arnold, he worked mostly deltoids and legs. Quote, I didn't want to overtrain anything that looked like bodybuilder muscles, like the biceps or pecs. My thinking was that strong legs and big shoulders would give me more of an athletic look. End quote. 
Nevertheless, Arnold's workout included training all body parts with heavier emphasis on training his legs and shoulders. Regarding training abdominals, Arnold had this to say in an interview, quote, I also took a lot of stomach courses at the Sport Connection in LA, where I would do anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes of non-stop ab sessions, end quote. From the statements and the gym setup that Arnold worked in, plus the fact that Arnold's workout was shoulder and leg focused, his program would have looked something like this. Arnold would have most likely split his workouts into an upper body and lower body split and likely worked in a circuit style of training to train his cardiovascular system, hitting the weight six times a week. The majority of his workout would have been performed on the Universal Station as shown in these rare photos of Arnold working with his co-star Sandal Bergman. The workout of course would have been performed on the Universal Station in circuit style fashion to ensure that he and his co-stars could get a good workout in. For the upper body split, military presses would have been performed as well as lat pull downs and chin ups, dumbbell lateral raises, bench press on the bench press station, barbell rows, rear lat raises, easy curl bar, bicep curls, upright rows, triceps extensions for the lower body split, back squats, leg curls, front squats, leg press on the leg press station, leg extensions, standing calf machine toe raises, seated calf machine raises, all of these exercises would have been performed in a circuit, each for 12 to 15 reps, and the circuit would have been repeated four to five times. Such a workout is, as you can see, not too different from today's machine-based workouts in a gym, except that this is done in a circuit. Rest periods, therefore, would have been very short, 30 seconds at the most, and such a circuit would have been great at building muscle and becoming athletic and building cardiovascular endurance as well. Arnold was fixed on being quick on his feet, and to this end, he turned to his original soccer training he had done as a boy in Austria. He concentrated on a series of exercises including sideways running, running up and down staircases and backwards, going from a fast trot to a complete stop before running at full speed again, etc. To look more athletic, Arnold also incorporated running up to half an hour a day, running four miles and swimming one mile and then do his one hour of weight training and when you add martial arts and stunt practice, Arnold was performing up close to four to five hours of physical training every day along with filming on set. All in all, Arnold slimmed down from 240 pounds or 109 kilos down to 210 pounds or 95 kilos. Arnold would also concentrate on doing a series of stretching exercises every day, reasoning that during the filming he would find himself in awkward positions and these stretching exercises would effectively tone his muscles and joints to prepare him for the rigors of onset routines. John Milius, screenwriter for Conan the Barbarian, and Arnold watched Japanese movies about samurais and sent martial artists armorers and horse riding specialists. One such fellow was sword handler Paul Cloud who instructed Schwarzenegger in a number of moves including how to roll on the ground while holding a sword in his hand. Arnold practiced broadsword combat two hours a day to learn to lop off heads and slice bodies for the film. Here he is seen with the Mongol, a broadsword expert. Quote, the Mongol came round many times and showed me how to handle these big heavy swords. The two of us would put on heavy armor and really battle it out." End quote. Indeed, Arnold had to learn to kill basically using the broadsword. Quote, the skills in Conan were done by cutting through a blood bag hanging from an actor's ribcage, neck or stomach. End quote. Unlike the samurai sword, which is light and very sharp, the broadsword is more massive and double-edged sword heavier at 11 pounds, ideal for delivering big blows that hack through armor and flesh, and ideal for the movie Conan. Nevertheless, Milia sent martial arts master Kiyoshi Yamazaki, who actually has a cameo in the film and is a karate master and master of the katana. Throughout the day, Yamazaki trained Schwarzenegger in Kenjutsu, the art of Japanese swordmanship, training two hours a day, three times a week. Quote, Yamazaki stressed the formal samurai technique of handling the katana to make the sword stop dead at the end of an arc each time we drew it, to train our muscles to make it stop. 
We were also taught how to keep the correct chest and chin positions and how to look an opponent in the eye while moving on one leg. These basic movements were very important to me since John had written a great scene in the movie where I practice my sword moves after the spirits have brought me back to life. End quote. Even Arnold would practice Kenjutsu with the heavier Atlantean broadswords used in the film, each which were 10 pounds in weight featuring cast bronze hilts and pommels and 36 inch long blades, hand ground by swordmaster Jody Sampson and cost $10,000 a piece to forge. For the role of Conan, Arnold also learned Brazilian Valetudo, which is the original mixed martial arts combining Japanese Jiu Jitsu with kickboxing that was later made famous in the UFC after Hoist Gracie was crowned undisputed full contact fighter back in the early 90s. Arnold was truly becoming a weapon, an expert martial artist learning all kinds of throws, elbow blows, body slams along with punching and wrestling as well as weapons fighting including battle axes. Along with all of this, Arnold also learned his own stunts from a stunt trainer as back in the day they couldn't find a stuntman that was a bodybuilder, as bodybuilding was such an unknown sport and there were no stuntmen that had Arnold's size. Learning stunts would of course pay out in his later successful action hero movies. And if you don't believe that Arnold did his own stunts, think again. Back then, bodybuilding was not as huge as it is nowadays and there were no stunt doubles that had the size of Arnold. Arnold was big and smooth, but no one had a physique like Arnold back then in the movie industry, except for perhaps Lou Ferrigno, who was at the time starring as the Hulk. Arnold was reported to sustain several injuries during the filming of Conan, including a 10-foot drop after being knocked off by a stunt dog which caused him to injure his back, and Arnold was also accidentally stabbed. He cut his head, falling into a pool, pulled a ligament in his knee when falling off a horse and was cut on the neck when an axe head broke off during battle. I mean, that's pretty epic, some pretty epic stories right there. Taken from his book, Total Recall, Arnold states that he had no specific diet for Conan and states that he ate lighter foods such as salads, chicken and fruits instead of heavier foods like steak and eggs, which he would indulge in during his bodybuilding days. Because he was too ripped before filming after winning the Mr. Olympia, he had to put on body fat, letting his body fat reach 12% for the role of Conan. So besides toning down his physique in muscular size, Arnold had to also gain body fat for Conan. Although Arnold had decreased his ripped physique from 240 down to 210 pounds, he still looks big and muscular in the role, but definitely smooth in comparison to his bodybuilding days. It is well known that Arnold took oral dianabol and injections of primabolin and or decadurabolin during his competitive years and probably experimented with thyroids as his pre-contest preparation, which I have covered extensively on this channel. However, in my opinion, it is unlikely that he used anything for his role as Conan the Barbarian because he had to lose a good 30 pounds of muscle and on top of that, look smooth for the role. Arnold looks like he was carrying about 12 to 15 percent of body fat in Conan and when you take that into account then his muscle loss was likely even greater. Further, Arnold had always been very open about his steroid use during his bodybuilding career and stated that in Mr. America The Tragic History of a Bodybuilding Icon by John D. Fair that when he first started getting into movies he stopped using steroids assumingly of course because he was too huge. So that was Arnold's training for the film of Conan the Barbarian. And if you have enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Click the bell button to be notified of future videos and please leave me your comments. If you're interested in me covering more old school bodybuilding workouts from the action heroes of the 1980s, please let me know in the comment section. I really want to continue this Hollywood action film star bodybuilding workout routines from the 80s series. So just let me know in the comment section if you've enjoyed the video as well. And also list the stars that you'd like me to cover. Anyway, that's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. 
As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooken.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding.